In this video, we're going to talk about Paul Baltus's lifespan perspective. Paul Baltus was uh, lived between 1939 and 2006, to uh, give you an idea. And he, this theory was mostly developed in the late 80s, I believe. And here we have Mr. Baltus himself. And I don't think you'll disagree with him when uh, I say that he looks like a sophisticated Garth from Wayne's World. And I think this will help you not only remember what he looks like a little bit, but also help you to remember that his theories deal with a uh, lifespan perspective and the changes that humans go through in their life. So you can imagine he started off as Garth and ended up as this uh, prominent psychologist is a pretty big change. So obviously that's a joke, but <laughs> hopefully it'll help you remember him a little better. So there are eight... Uh, eight it, the lifespan perspective is broken into eight different uh, different sections, or it's an eightfold theory. And um, just to go through them quickly, uh, it, it's your uh, Baltus is saying that um, that the development, that human development, is a lifelong process, is a multi-dimensional one, is multi-directional, and I'll go into what all these mean individually. Uh, is plastic, is multidisciplinary, contextual. It involves growth, maintenance, and regulation of loss, and co-construction of biology, culture, and the individual. So let's get started. Lifelong. This means that no age period dominates the development. A more traditional approach is to look at the uh, age up to early adulthood, so from um, infancy to adolescence or prenatal to adolescence, and to say that this is where the bulk of a person's uh, a person develops. This is the this is the bulk of the changes that will occur in their life, and then by the time they get to middle or to adulthood, they're not really going to change very much, and then they're going to go into decline in their elder years. But um, this is not necessarily true, as we will see. As the next um, the, uh, as the next uh, part of this theory is that multi that it's multidimensional. So um, actually, we'll see why. It doesn't change, or it doesn't stay stationary, in um, actually throughout this whole presentation, I suppose, or throughout this whole theory. So, um, multidimensionally, and this means that a person's development is not based on just one aspect of their being, but uh, he broke it up into three main distinct parts: biological, cognitive, and socio-emotional. So. The biological, and all these things interrelate to each other, but will also develop uh, somewhat individually as well. So, for instance, a person might have an advanced uh, cognitive development, but a not, uh, but their socio-emotional development is uh, stunted, perhaps. You know, they don't always have to move at the same speed, but they also influence each other. So, stunted in one area might influence uh, another area as well. So biologically, this refers to a change in a person's physical nature. So that means, um, uh, you know, height and weight, of course, genetics, uh, the development of the brain as a physical organ, um, nutrition, exercise, these kind of things. Cognitive uh, has to do with the change in an individual's thinking, intelligence, and language as they grow older. So obviously language skills will develop, maybe even multiple languages, as well as thinking and intelligence. There'll be more... Uh, uh, symbolic thought, uh, uh, reasoning, logic, and stuff will increase or will uh, develop as the um, as the individual ages, and also can diminish in elder years. For instance, uh, thinking speed is not as fast in old in elder in the late adulthood as it is in early adulthood. But there's more experiences to draw on, so. They, you know, there's a balance there, so they might not be able to think quite as fast technically, but they might be more knowledgeable or intelligent in the way that they have more experience to draw on and uh, more knowledge at that point. And then the third thing is uh, socio-emotional, and this is changes in an individual's relationship with other people's emotions and personality. So basically, the relationship with other people and the emotions that occur... Uh, because of that. So examples of this might be, you know, feelings that uh, toddlers have, when a toddler's being aggressive, going to, um, going to a prom, the feelings you'll have there, the feelings you'll have meeting up with a friend, or getting in a fight, all these kind of things, and your relationships, and the way your personality develops because of these relationships 
that everyone has. Or if you don't have any relationships with other people, that's obviously going to greatly uh, affect the socio-emotional uh, health or development of an individual as well. So the changes or the lack thereof are both in equal, uh, I'd, I think equally um, important when looking at all these three different factors. So the next aspect of the lifespan development uh, uh, psychology uh, presented by Baltus is that it's multi-directional. So some aspects will expand while others diminish. This means that while as the example I gave earlier, in your elder years your uh, physical health might decline but uh, your socio-emotional health might be uh, getting better than ever. Or when you're young you're going to have different things are going to th basically things will uh, will get better and worse at different times. And this goes back to these different um, aspects, the biological, cognitive, and socio-emotional. Uh, one might be developing in a positive way, while another one might be diminishing at different aspects in a person's life. Plastic, I think this is basically means like the neuroplasticity, the capacity for change. So the mind is capable of change. And um, so this is taking into fact the factor that um, that we have this capacity for change. It's also multidisciplinary, so we don't look. There's not one discipline that can you can study and just understand an entire person's life lifespan development uh, with just that one uh, discipline. Psychology, sociology, anthropology, neuroscience, medical research and more all go into our understanding of how a person develops throughout their life. Um, lifespan development is very contextual, which means that the different, the context or the setting that a person grows up in will, um, will affect that, that person's development. So, like I said, if there, someone was locked in a room and had no, uh, no uh, interaction with other people that's going to heavily influence the way they would turn out. The exact same person in that environment and setting and that context is going to turn out completely different than a person who's in a loving, nourishing family in a normal social environment. And this has to do with all sorts of factors. Historical, economic, social, and cultural factors are the main ones. Um, so, you know, uh, any historical um, Meaning, like, what happened in, in the person's life as far as, like, the world history goes can affect, like, wars and stuff like that. The economy of the person or the country they're in, how much money and resources they have available to them. All these things will uh, affect the context that they develop in and, therefore, will affect their development. And so, uh, Baltus and divided this section, um, the, uh, con the context, into three different types of context. There's normative, uh, age-graded influences, so and normative, history-graded influences. And these mean normative, I guess, is basically saying that things that a large group of people have in common. So normative, age-graded influences means that, like, let's say, and let's just stick with the United States, for instance. Um, all children are going to start school at kindergarten in the United States. So it's normal for all individuals of a particular age to start going to uh, a school and um, it's normal for all individuals in their teen years to go through puberty so these are normal um, normal influences that affect all the people or the majority of the population at a certain age next there's a uh, historically graded influences so this has to do with the historical time period common to a people of a particular generation so those who grow up in the 20s are going to have a very different uh, lifespan development than people who grew up in the 60s, who are going to have a very different lifespan development to people who grew up in the new millennium. Um, there are just different, uh, different historical events and technologies, and so the context is different, and therefore it will affect the people's lifespan development. And then the last uh, category, which is a little different, is non-normative life events. So these are events that occur uh, usual, unusual occurrences that have a major impact on the individual's life. And I think the emphasis here is on the individual. These are events that are particular to a certain person. And so it could be um, if they were exposed to a certain natural disaster, their house burned down at a certain age. A family member died young, which is not 
the normal circumstance, a close family member dying at a, a, while you're a very young age, like a parent, or, um, I mean, all sorts of things, even like positive things as well, like if there was a, if they win the lotto, or if there was a particular career opportunity that opened up to them, these are not um, typical of other people in their peer group or in their region, geographic region, and will affect the individual in an individual way. And the next category is that um, lifespan it involves in your lifespan is going to involve growth, maintenance, and regulation of loss. And these can be kind of thought of as the three goals of human development on a very broad scale. So growth, maintenance, and regulation of loss are all positive things based on the um, circumstances. So growth obviously is great. You want to grow and increase uh, in all sorts of aspects of your life, physically, uh, economically, uh, intellectually, cognitively. Growing is a positive thing. Maintenance is when you get to a point where you're not growing as much, but if you were to, for instance, to keep your mind sharp, you want to use it and um, continue to challenge yourself. If you get to a certain age, maybe middle or late adulthood, and you're not using your mind frequently, it's going to start to diminish, which brings us to uh, regulation of loss. So at some point, there will be physical, mental, uh, uh, I guess economical could also be um, loss, meaning those things are not going to be doing as well. And instead of, if you cannot maintain it at the level it is, and it's not growing, then the best you can do is regulate your loss and try to control it and make sure it doesn't get out of hand and to uh, let it be smooth and graceful as possible. The next section, the last section actually, is the co-construction of biology, culture, and the individual. And this is basically just saying that all three of these factors affect each other. Biology is your physical state. Culture is the people and stuff influencing, uh, like the, the culture you grew up in, the people and events around you. should give a better definition of culture, but that's what I got for now. And um, the individual, which is you as an individual human being, your personal choices and stuff. So to give an example, as an individual, you can affect your culture by, you know, like let's say Martin Luther King. He was an individual who uh, substantially affected his culture. But on a smaller level, you can affect the culture of your home by the way you, you know, by many different ways. Um, uh, in, in addition, the culture is definitely going to affect the individual. The culture you grew up in is going to affect your viewpoints and uh, perspectives and decisions. And um, culture can even affect, biology seems like one where it's like, okay, that's maybe more set in stone. But I think it also is, some, uh, to a certain extent, malleable. For instance, your individual choices, like how you well you eat in your teen years, can affect your growth. So if you make choices to only eat junk food or not to eat it very much at all or something like that, then you'll probably have some kind of stunted growth or obesity or something like that. While if you eat well, then your biology will, you know, you'll be healthier. And uh, cultural, for instance, one random um, example that comes to mind relating culture and biology or how culture can affect biology, because biology, of course, will affect culture and the individual because, you know, you go through puberty, you're going to have hormonal changes that's going to affect you as an individual, and you have drives, all sorts of drives that affect you as an individual and affect your choices. So one way that, like, culture could affect biology is, like, say you're in prison and you're surrounded by in a dangerous environment with all these men and not very many women there might be a large increase in testosterone that your body will you know or an adrenaline or something like that and it will affect your body um, which will also affect your psychology because your body is trying to adapt to this culture if you get thrown in the middle of the woods your prob body's probably going to you know like a bear is chasing you for weeks. Okay, this is this is getting to be a crazy example. So I think I'll stop here. I hope you get the idea. So let's go ahead and review the characteristics of lifespan perspective and this will give you a chance if you want to see if you memorized them correctly um, or took good notes. So we're going to go through individually. So let's see if you can come up with them before I say them. So the first one is lifelong. It's the second, multidimensional. The third, Multi-directional, so multi-dimensional, multi-directional. The force is plastic, the ch uh, changeableness. Multidisciplinary, so you got to remember there's three multis, multi-dimensional, multi-directional, and multidisciplinary. They all have the Ds in there too, or DI even. Uh, dimensional, directional, and disciplinary. Contextual, 
um, uh, that lifespan develop perspective involves growth, maintenance, and regulation of loss. And finally, the co-construction of biology, culture, and the individual. So I hope this was helpful.